quickly about Manuel. He is a, a cello teacher, a cello teacher in the South Florida area. He recently completed his Doctor of Education. So congratulations to you on that, Manny. I mean, it's a, it's a hard process. And he, re, something that I found really neat that I just discovered you know, about an hour and a half ago is that he worked with the Nat King Cole Foundation Generation Hope, sorry, the Nat King Cole Generation Hope for the past 12 years putting on a summer camps down there in South Florida. So without any further ado, I'm going to give it up to you, Manny. Thank you. I have to put myself into, uh, there we are. I'm going to share, hi, my name, my name is Manny Capote, even though I'm Dr. Capote, call me Manny, and I'm going to uh, share, I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to power through, uh, which has, to, and then leave time at the end for questions. Okay, there's a lot of research in there. But I'll try to speed through and then focus on the product, the partnership, the mentoring, and the why. And then uh, all of this will be available to you later. I have a PDF of it, and I will supply it to the Nat King Cole Generation Hope organization. So you can get that. And I want you to have your uh, my email that you can always reach me on that. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Uh, If I can find my files. Okay. Oh, I know what I needed to do. Hold on a second. Hang in there. I'm going to open up. I have to open up my PowerPoint. There we go. And now I can share. And I want to make it uh, full size. Uh, let's see. I want to get rid of my thing on the side here. There. I'm going to try to minimize this as much as possible. Okay, here we go. The title of my, let me still to. Title of my dissertation, let me, I got to uh, get rid of the top bar. This is going to be technically high video panel. No. Victor, can you help me with this? Manny, we can Manny, see your PowerPoint. We can, we can see Perfect. your PowerPoint just fine. PowerPoint? Yes, we see it. It's very good. All right, never mind. Here I go. Mentoring the title of this, mentoring the title one elementary string student. It's even though it focuses on the elementary string student, it could be a middle school or a high school string student. And this was extracted from my dissertation, which the uh, uh, which I cite below. Professionally, I was a principal cellist with the Florida Philharmonic, the Florida Grand Opera, the Mocha Pops, and the Ballet for over 20 years. So I have a background as a performer. I was also, after that, I was a band and orchestra director at a private school, American Heritage School in Boca del Rey. And then simultaneously, I was conductor and a music director of the Youth Orchestra of Palm Beach County. After all of that, I joined the staff at the Lynn University Conservatory in August 2010 and I was in charge of music education and community outreach programs. Uh, and I also did a little bit of teaching. The, a year ago, I became the coordinator of the Lynn University Preparatory School. And recently, due to the COVID pandemic, the university has made the difficult decision to suspend the preparatory school of music. My last day at the university will be September 1st. I'm grateful for the, uh, I'm grateful for the wonderful connections I made my 10 years at Lynn and look forward to what's ahead. My education is I did undergraduate studies without a degree because I studied engineering as well as music at Northwestern uh, a while back. My bachelor's eventually came from the University of Miami because I was working professionally in the area. 
Later, I got a master's at Boston, a BU, and just this summer, I got my doctor of education degree. Uh, mentoring and then university mentoring. 10 years of mentoring underserved students through the conservatory's music partnership program. Uh, do the fl funding fluctuations is the nemesis of this program. I've had as few as four, as many as 14 mentors, but I did a little rough calculation and an average of eight mentors per year, that's basically 80 mentors over the past 10 years, they have provided roughly over 3,000 hours of free expert mentoring to underserved students. Uh, the term underserved is used a lot. It could be a Title I student. It's basically a student that uh, does not have access to all the resources uh, socially, economically, that, that they're entitled to. Uh, Plumos Elementary School of the Arts and UB Kinsey Palmview Elementary School of the Arts have been the primary beneficiaries of these mentoring efforts. They have been part of this mentoring pro uh, uh, program for the last 10 years. Um, you, we've had a summer strings two week camp at Lynn University until this summer for nearly 100 underserved string players. And it's always been a joint effort with the Nat King Cold Generation Hope Organization and the school district as well as Lynn. This summer, the university was closed. So very, we're very lucky to have had the Nat King Cold Generation Hope Organization provide a much needed one week virtual string camp. These camps have provided much needed continuity to the string students in the aforementioned schools as well as other schools, especially given this pandemic situation where they're basically locked in their homes. My firm belief in the, in the positive effects of mentoring led me to choose my recently written dissertation and, it, and its title. Uh, as I speak to you all, I am preaching to the choir. You all are doing it, have been doing it, and are continuing to do it. We, you know, you are the ones making a difference in the musical lives of your students. And my, my hat's off to you guys. But you need all the help and the support you can get. Uh, and wherever you can get it. And especially if you have underserved students that can't afford lessons, you want to get that free expert support mentoring into your schools. Uh, if you particularly, if you're a, a, a band teacher, all of a sudden you have to teach strings, all the more reason to get a expert free string mentor in there to help us support your program. Uh, the dissertation's purpose, which I will share with you later, is to provide research-based validation for the importance of free and expert music mentoring to the lives of the young underserved student. You want to use, I use this information, and you want, you could too, as a tool, as information, as a, as a, as a, as a planned weapon to convince those school administrators, principals, donors, of the importance of mentoring and music in the lives of your students. So very often we're in a situation where music is thought of as not as important as reading, not as important as math. Uh, standardized tests compete with it, and I'll, I'll go into more of that later. You can use the, the, not only the research that I discovered uh, in my dissertation, but also the research that I came up with as a result of my mentoring and my mentors. Uh, to, as, as ammunition to uh, argue for the having the music con continue to be in the lives of your students and in your program. I also give, will give you a generic version, version of the partnership program that I created at Lynn that you can adapt as you see fit. You can change it, delete, add, and it, and it lends itself to be done virtually, and I'll more to that later. Um, if you're a string player or non-string player teaching large groups virtually, the mentor can offer expert outside one-on-one -on -one teaching modeling for all to witness and for some to participate on a rotating basis. However, as impressive as these quantitative numbers that I just gave you sound, they can't and do, do not reflect the personal and indelible impact that these mentor-student relationships foster. Uh, I'll give you a quote from a student. Starting from a young age, Music has always played a vital role in my life. I was fortunate enough to keep this vital source uh, a prominent part of my life because of free private lessons that I have been offered all throughout my elementary, middle, 
and high school years. This, this young woman just graduated from high school, from the Dreyfus School of the Arts. Receiving private lessons in the elementary school, and she studied with another mentor and eventually became, I mentored her for free. Uh, it was especially important because the one-on-one -on -one support and attention is very much needed among young music students. With a private mentor, I was able to advance at levels that more so suited my needs rather than moving at the same pace as the other students in my class. Having a private teacher at a young age also meant having a role model, that's the key to it, to look up to, which inspired me to continue my studies as a cellist throughout middle school and high school. I am now entering my senior year at High School of the Arts and I'm forever grateful for the opportunities offered to me. Uh, the background, when elementary school age students want to learn to play a string instrument. If you're a normal middle class or affluent, they rent or purchase one, they take private lessons, practice at home, participate in your orchestra, uh, but you need parental economic support and involvement are essential. Underserved Title I elementary school students, or it could be middle school or high school, Title I students without the socioeconomic support are at a distinct disadvantage. They do not have the support necessary to acquire an instrument and pay for private lessons. Title I schools, as much as they provide, you cannot afford to rent or purchase. Funds for the instruments in the schools come from the school district or private sources, but that leaves the, the part, the, the, the private instruction gap there. Uh, so th that is the purpose of my dissertation. Uh, there is a need for more instrumental string programs in elementary school because it's the optimal time. Cutiera, Robert Cutiera is the Dean of the University of Southern California, Thornton School of Music. Uh, there's, there's an optimal period, it doesn't mean it's impossible to learn later. An optimal period versus a critical period. If a critical period would be, if you don't get any motherly love when you're a baby, there, there, there are critical times for you to learn how to walk, how to read, how to be loved. So critical peers are those that are very difficult to, to, uh, to, to, to learn, to, to, to adopt later on. Optimal period means which is the best time. Well, development will be easier, faster, or easier. The South Florida School District has two elementary art schools with great programs with the majority of Title I students enrolled. These two elementaries, and you, you heard from uh, Susan Rodberg and Laura Sinclair yesterday, they have roughly, I would say off the top of our head, 1,200 Title I students, majority, I would say 86% or more of them are Title I. And, uh, and they are excellent candidates for a music partnership mentoring program. Um, let me go back, okay. Uh, some problems uh, encountered. Well, you try, hey, so you got the mentors, you got the funding, and then you wanna put them in the schools. Guess what? Your problems are, are, are beginning. Placing mentors depends on available funding from the state. State of Florida mentoring is all over. Some summers, have, some some budgets get cut, and we get very little. The university gets very little. Some budgets are very plentiful, and we get a lot. And then private grants, the same thing uh, from the state. The private grants varies from year to year. Continuity of funding is the nemesis. The next nemesis is the assessments. Florida, we have the Florida Standards Assessments, and they're usually scheduled in the spring. Uh, art and music classes are often suspended for weeks so that teachers can focus solely on preparing students for standardized tests. 60% um, of the nation's school district has decreased instructional time in subjects other than reading and math programs. We have, we have become obsessed with reading, math, and assessments, and then teaching to the test. Um, so the reduced instructional time has been very, in art and music, has been uh, a real problem in, with the, all the art, art programs throughout the country. Uh, one music teacher said, I was not able to get mentor teaching dates because you have to schedule in-person dates. In, in the virtual sense, you'd have to schedule virtual times. I could not get mentor teaching dates out of the administration. And this is from a cooperative administrator. Unfortunately, with upcoming field trips, in-school activities and testing, the dates are limited. And the diagnostic testing window is larger with testing from early December to the 20th, which means no mentor visits because the hallways have to be absolutely quiet. So all this research will help you 
argue that music is equally important to reading and math is actually going to help these students perform better in reading and math. The musical, another uh, uh, existing research, musical, social, and academic benefits derived from music and arts programs are often misunderstood and underappreciated. You'll have all of that in the PDF. Uh, some of the important terms, Title I, all of you know what that is. Mentoring, you know what that is. It goes back to the Odyssey and Homer. The music partnership program I'm talking about, assessments, many of you have it. Uh, mentor, choice magnet programs, optimal period, underserved students. Uh, here are, I will gloss over this. These are some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, the uh, articles and dissertations that, that support, uh, you know, the presence of, uh, uh, the positive presence of music in, in a child's life. Um, anything from instruction for improving cognitive and social emotional development, academic achievement in school age children and youth. Uh, you know, everything to support the presence of music. Uh, Dr. Dr. Gutierrez from USC was asked three questions. At what age did children begin music? Informal activities soon after birth. Systematic classes are on age three and lessons with the goal of learning the instrument to start between six and nine. So the, the and what instrument other than maybe keyboard what instrument lends itself to be to being to be learned between the ages of six and nine? And it's a string instrument. They have little string instruments. We have Suzuki programs. We have we have the physical instruments and the pedagogy. And you know, if you are, many of us started around that age. We want to provide that same opportunity to your Title I elementary school kid. Um, in neuroscience, some of the arguments. You know, uh, when you map uh, the brains of violin players, you know, the, the, the part of the brain, the somosensory, somosensory cortex, representing the, the left hand was bigger than the side that represented the bow hand, particularly if you started playing before the age of 10. The, um, be, those musicians that started training before the age of seven exhibited a, 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 an increased carpus callosum size. That's the part of the brain that connects the right brain and the left brain. So if you start playing before the age of seven, all those synapses, connections between the right and left are greater, increased, and they grow. They are generated by music. Uh, probably the one research book, this guy, Eric Jensen, has got two great books, Teaching with the Brain and Mind and Arts with the Brain and Mind. He argues in many chapters, the participation in the arts, we're talking about all the arts, the visual, the kinetic, uh, so you're talking about dance and visual arts also. Participation in the arts results in positive, academic, cognitive, emotional, social, perceptual, motor, attention, memory, creative, and self-discipline benefits. So if you have to read one book, check this guy out. I think it's only about 90 pages. Um, uh, studies that show, a recent study, music participation has been shown, positive outcomes across different academic domains. Um, also, Chapman, Morrison, and Lipsy, another recent study. Uh, music, making or learning, improve cognitive function, social emotional capacity, and an academic achievement. So therefore, besides the obvious benefits of music, there's all these added benefits that we unfortunately are gonna to have to argue so that the person that doesn't get it, maybe get it, okay? Now, in my dissertation, the research questions, I had to change them all in, because uh, of the COVID-19 situation. So it, I was going to do Survey Monkey and access the school district. Middle of March, school district shuts down. No students access, no, no, no. So basically I dealt, I had existing mentors that had done 200 hours of visits. So one of the mentors' perceptions of the musical, academic, and social benefits derived from participation in a mentor Title I string program. And then one of the mentors' perceptions of the teachers, of the administrators and the parents' perceptions for the musical, academic, social benefit derived from the participation in a mentored elementary stream program. So we, I wanted their perceptions, and I did a I did focus group with them, and I also wanted them to tell me what perceptions, if any, did they derive from their contact with the teachers, the administrators, and the parents of those students. 
Okay. With that in mind, again, I, um, the purpose of the focus group, I did a focus group to document these perceptions and move on. Uh, the mentors had, as the more I got used to this format, the mentors had established relationships with the students, the administration, the teachers, and their parents. And that was the rationale for their selection of subject, other than the fact that that's all I could do because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, the perceptions address a specific focus group of questions, which I will share uh, later, which are similar to the research questions. Uh, and I realized in the middle of this, I start feeling sorry for myself, let me go back, that these mentors, even though we have to end the mentoring year in the middle of March, they have provided, they have done 10 visits of four hours each, uh, and which for 40 hours times five mentors, five out of the six participated. So they've had 200 combined hours of uh, cumulative of mentoring throughout the 10 visits during this cut short 2019-2020 school year. I had uh, graduate students and undergraduates, and they're all superb performers. Uh, the, the conservatory at Lynn is very small, but it's, there, it's a conservatory. No music education, nothing. Just play, play, play. And we have some, and they're, they're wonderful rituals for players. Um, the focus group questions are basically their experiences, their perceptions of the social, academic, uh, and also musical benefits of participation in the program. So I asked them their questions. And, and basically, I, I, I got about 3,000 words of transcript, which I transcribed. And then I had to extract it. And I used, just to give you a little, a little, a little just a little, a little bling, I couldn't, do, couldn't put quantitative, but I used different word art cloud. I extracted the text, reduced it down from 3,000 to 2,000, 200 to 291. And then I used a, for basically a 200, less than 300 word extraction. And I plugged it into various word art and worded out .com to create different word clouds just to see what popped out. So I had an intimate knowledge with the, with the, uh, with the transcript, I had intimate knowledge with their words and their perceptions. And I was, I mean, when you read their transcripts, it's really amazing. It's almost like they got as much out of it as their students did, which is, I found that surprising. Here's a word cloud example. Uh, the, the reason I love, love this one, because the word relationship just popped out in the middle. So if you had to define and what makes a mentor different than the regular teacher because of the relationship, the one-on-one -on -one relationship. That mentor could be a mentor to several students, but that special relationship, that bond, week after week, year after year, continuity, that bond gives, it. it's just incredible because you, some people call them near peer relations, but that relationship is what makes it unique. It's a, it's a, and then you look at all the other words that came with it. Again, you're gonna get this in a PDF, Social skills, experience, improve, group, critical, teaching, setting, consistent, happy, parents, learn. All everything that came out of this was positive. And then of course the word art cloud makes it cuter because I could put a couple of notes there. But again, approach the administrators analysis aware, appreciate academics, answering, behave. Uh, so students that maybe were not behaved in other classes were behaved during during, during their mentoring. So the whole mentoring changed their whole uh, social dynamic. Uh, their direct perceptions, which these are quotes that I took out of their direct dialogue to answer the direct focus group questions. And they, the mentors function as role models to the students they mentor. Personal relationships are formed that allow for increased musical as well as social growth and improvement. Administrators, because they have contact when they go in out of the school, they positively react by observe they watch the mentoring. They want to see what is. They want to see what the students are doing by observing how the kids are meeting new teachers. You get a general diversity of the learning process, which changes their daily routine and helps to perceive the material better. The, here's the cognitive part. The one-on-one -on -one mentor-student approach develops the students' listening and answering skills. 
uh, as well as their collaborative skills, which is a social, the critical thinking skills, which are developed through musical instruction. When you talk about a piece of music and you're listening to something and you're, what are you going to work on for next time? You have goals can be potentially transferred to other subject areas in the opinion of the mentors. That was, came out of their lips, out of their perceptions. Uh, the mentor's perception of the parents were acquired either directly from the parents. Parents pick up the kids, parents show up at school, or indirectly from the students being mentored. My mom or my dad said this or told me that. Did you play for your mother? Did you play for your father? Did you take the instrument home? The spectrum ranged from gratitude for the instruction they provided to, to, to no parental support. That surprised me. There are students without the ability of support and practice at home, and they pose the unexpected challenge of having the mentors provide strategies for keeping the student engaged and improving only during school hours. Um, so basically, the, I can honestly and convincingly be stated that the effect of participation in a mentor Title I elementary string instrumental program was an indispensably positive one for these five mentors and their students. The product. Okay, so the product is basically my generic. It's there for you guys to use. Highly motivated and qualified. Not every student at your at a university or conservatory or college is necessarily, you have to find highly motivated, somebody who's taught, taught students, likes working with younger students, that and is motivated to continue doing so, even though they're performers, they love teaching. They've worked with underserved kids before. And you want them to, the, on the other qualification, they have to be really excellent players. Um, we provide them, we provide it through the grants, a monetary stipend each semester. The, and it was funded from state grants as well as private grants. And the minimum that they did was 12 visits of four hours each per academic year. We would have done more than that had we been given the chance. Uh, sometimes when I've had more grant money, I've had chamber ensembles, quartets, quintets, woodwind, brass, strings, percussion. Uh, I've even had keyboard mentors. Uh, in the schools, depending upon the funding, which is all over the shop. Uh, the mentors schedule their visits at the beginning of the semester, and the, st the stipends are provided, and they're taxable, and they assist the mentors with school-related expenses not covered by the financial aid of scholarship. All of this can be done virtually. Um, the program can be done virtually by the orchestra director. You know, the mentor should not have direct access with the students, they're minors. Using Zoom or any other platform, Google, Google, Google Teacher, Google Docs, Google Drive, like we did last week. The orchestra directors and mentors, and we've you've already been this this has been discussed before, must observe the specific approach appropriate virtual protocols as dictated by the respective school districts, Title IX compliance office. Every school district has to have they have their own parameters and they're going to allow it. And ultimately your principal, the principal has to approve it. I know of a case where a principal did not approve it. Zoom sessions should be controlled by and initiated by the orchestra director in their classroom. It should be recorded and stored by the orchestra director. Why do you record it? You record it so that for that student who's absent that day, who is not part of the live experience, they can have access to that later on. Also for security, anything that gets said that's inappropriate, there's never any doubt as to who said what. So it's very important to have that recorded for, 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 for a myriad of reasons. Uh, and the virtual mentoring will take the form, uh, like one of my colleagues said yesterday, focus on what you can do. You're not going to get ensemble playing out of a 20, 30 student master, you know, Zoom experience. The virtual mentoring takes the form of a virtual master class from the music previously provided by the orchestra director. Like last week, you provide music through the Google Drive. There are the, you know, you can provide teaching videos, you can provide parts marked and all that. And then, and then in this virtual master class, you can have short, short little contribution. One student at a time plays 
for the, for the mentor. Other than the mentor comments to the student, the student comments can be done. You want their participation. Their comments can be done verbally, if they raise their hands, or to a chat box. Again, you got to get approval by the school district, the principal, and then you want to adopt certain standards of conduct. Uh, there's something, there's the magic age of 13, there's something I left that Children's Online Privacy Protection at COPA is for students th under 13, which is in a whole other world. So that's something that if you teach younger students, you want them uh, below the age of 13, you might want to familiarize yourself with that. Uh, some examples of uh, protocols. Group class and lessons will be conducted via Zoom or other platforms. Visibility. Virtual lessons must take place in a visible public room in the home of the student, i.g. dining room, living room, not in the bedroom. There needs to be some level of visibility to other adults in the house. Remember, they're minors. Supervisions, parents must be responsible for the child's health and safety and behavior management during the lesson. They can't leave the kid alone and they go grocery shopping, no. A parent, guardian, responsible adult over 18 must make themselves known at the start and end of the lesson and either be in the room or within listening distance. Uh, for the sake of the child, parents must agree to the room being distraction free and sibling free. And also I should add it pet free. No dogs, cats, birds, snakes, lizards. Interruptions from other members of the household will have a negative impact on the learning of the student. Refrain from phone calls, conversations, and other activities that are disruptive. So you have to set certain protocols, parameters. No solicitation. Mentors are prohibited from soliciting students' patronage for their personal lesson business. You know, the students can initiate it. The mentors cannot initiate it. Everything goes through the orchestra director. And then etiquette. What can you say versus what you cannot say? Appropriate rules of decorum need to be adopted for both the verbal when there is and the chat room conversation. You want to keep everything appropriate. Uh, what I did this year, select, we selected, I saw mentors were selected at this university conservatory that visited the schools in certain weeks. They're under the supervision of the school orchestra director. Um, and the each, the mentors and the student and the students chosen to participate were had to fall within certain criteria. Now I'm stressing this because this pandemic will pass. We are not going to be stuck in this virtual world forever. It might be a year, it might be less, it might be more. At some point, this will pass. Everybody will get it and get over it. And or so I have to be optimistic. At some point, you can't tell me that the Mets never going to go back to play. Uh, what did what orchestra just went Fort Worth Symphony. Fort Worth Symphony I heard last night, just went back is going back to live concerts. They're they're Socially distancing everybody, they asked adding an extra matinee in Europe and in Asia. Concerts are starting again, so at some point society will get this under control. People will just wear their masks and behave responsibly, and the pandemic will pass. The performing arts will go back to being performing arts. Okay, all right. Let me see. Generally speaking, I'll try to speed this up. The students participating. Now, if you do this virtually, all bets are off. Every student participates. When you do it private, when you do it in person, the students must not be studying privately. You don't want to compete with the place of the traditional private student teacher relationship. You don't want a student, even though they're a Title I student that has a private teacher, say you know, to the teacher, well, I'm not going to study with you anymore because I see the mentor at school and I get it for free. You want to avoid. So the orchestra director has to be sensitive to that when you do it privately. Uh, we'll never we'll go back to, to an in-person situation, then the student that's receiving the, the mentoring is somebody who actually does not have a teacher, is missing that. Um, and the socioeconomic situation prevents them from affording or accessing traditional private instruction or outside programs. The students must be highly motivated, talented, exhibiting a positive attitude, enthusiastic attitude with a healthy work ethic. And students are chosen by the orchestra director based on this criteria. Mentors are chosen by partnership program director. In that case, in, in this case, if you are using the, the program 
if John, let's say this, were, if this were being done at Vandercook, then John Ryan would have, maybe would be the one to administer this. Um, if I if I did it because I was at Lynn and I picked the mentors, you could do this as an orchestra director, and you can you can find that for several. If you're in Illinois, if you're in Chicago right now, if I were in Chicago right now and I had to institute a partnership program, I, my first phone call would be to John. Say what student teachers do you have at Vandercook that could be could could do be, be virtual mentors or in person mentors at at XYZ school, Title I school. And you also have Roosevelt, DePaul, uh, and any other uh, college that has uh, string teachers. You want a good quality string player, and those schools have them. So there's, there's a plethora, no matter where you are in this country, there are universities, colleges near you that have music, either, either performance majors or education majors, that would love to do this because then it's up to you to go out and hustle the funding. Now, because of the pandemic, it's a little bit of a blessing in disguise because let me go back. Um, uh, you can maybe find it easier to do because you can do it virtually. Um, the mentors have to be in good academic and conduct standing. Uh, my mentors always pass the level two background check and completed all compliance courses. So you want to make sure that whatever mentor, uh, university mentor, uh, you put in contact with your children passes a level two background check. You don't want anybody, any student with a questionable uh, uh, problem coming in contact with minors. And you want them, the most important thing about the mentoring is that they be really a, the greatest possible player. If you think as a, as a, as a the, are the people in your life that have exhibited them, made the most impact in your life are your teachers. You know, I was blessed to have some of the greatest teachers and I'm, I'm, I'm to this day, and, and they became my friends later. So to, to these role models, these mentors become role models. So my teachers are my role models and you want these mentors to be these young underserved students' role models, it's very important. Uh, and I, I, I'm gonna continue so I don't, uh, they provide, when we did it in person, they provided private lessons, small group lessons, chamber music coaching, audition preparation for the Mill School of the Arts, uh, instruction in instrumental techniques as well as uh, basic musicianship. All of this can be done virtually. Uh, these are just the details about setting, doing the program, which I will gloss over. You can read it when you get it. Uh, I had an assessment form. Generic assessment point. You can change this any way you see fit. Why? For two reasons. I mean, the date and the time. What school? What's the mentor's name? What instrument do they play? Student's name. And then you can add more lines for this. The short evaluation of students' playing level. Hey, they're in Suzuki Book One and they're playing Allegro, or or they're they're in essential elements for strings. They're working on this. So the initial. Initial assessment, one of the, you want to get something in writing where they're at. And then the mentor, what goes for the next lesson? Well, let's work on your left hand position. Let's work on your bow position. Let's work on your low twos. You know, whatever you want to work on your bass clef reading, whatever. Now, Florida, as in many states, like Illinois has theirs, we have Florida state standards. And very often uh, the teachers are, I expect, to teach to the standards. And I, and I picked, uh, I have like two pages of standards that I picked. I cherry picked them. I, you can change them. Uh, Illinois has theirs. There's the, there's, the, there's the standards for Illinois. So if you're in an academic situation where your principal or your administrator is asking you to teach to certain standards, look up the standards, cherry pick the ones that you are more appropriate for what you're doing. And then anytime you can incorporate them, review them, uh, then you can do so. Grading should be optional, should be positive. I never want to say poor. Uh, excellent, that means your high level of achievement, good. You have an understanding, but some mistakes. It needs improvement, means that the understanding and the skills is not being demonstrated completely. They didn't get it, that could be not their fault, it could be your fault. It could be a problem of the situation at home. 
that means that more, and more time and effort has to be dedicated. And this is an optional one. And then this form gets filled out and mailed to the, to the orchestra director. Here's an example of uh, listening skills uh, and playing skills. If I go back to listening skills, um, this, uh, let's see, let me see. You want to use correct music vocabulary. Um, for example, define criteria using correct music vocabulary to critique one's own and other's performance. Uh, they were rushing, the, the tempo was too fast. Uh, they were not in tune. They were playing flat, they were playing sharp. Uh, so you want to incorporate the vocabulary so they're speaking intelligently. Uh, and as far as performance, um, Perform simple diatonic melodies at sight. Simple sight reading. Um, sight reading standard exercises, simple repertoire. Uh, notation, notate rhythmic phrases and our melodies in very simple meter. So these are just, this is the ones, some of them are for fifth and sixth grade, but I cherry picked the ones that I thought were more relevant. And I want to end with a quote from a colleague. Um, this is a, a, a string mentor, one of my first string mentors that eventually became an orchestra director. And this is something extracted from a letter written to the university in support of our program when we were soliciting grants. And it reads, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for our ongoing relationship with your university from my own studies as a graduate student. Our relationship has blossomed into an ongoing mentorship program. Our elementary school is a Title I school, and the majority of our students are not able to afford rent or purchase their own instruments, much less afford private music instruction. Our School of the Arts has 558 students, 86% minority, Black, Hispanic, Asian, which is a, very much a demogra demographic in, uh, in underserved communities in South Florida. And 82.5% receive free and reduced lunch. Students in grades K through two receive 45 minutes of fine arts instruction every day, and the students in grades three to five receive 60 minutes each day. They participate in the following fine arts band, brass and woodwind, percussion, piano, strings, dance, uh, television production, digital media, vocal music, and visual art. The relationship is created through near peer mentoring. That's the term she used from uh, the mentors being close to their age, have an incredible impact on our students. In order to make the subject matter more accessible by providing one-on-one -on -one guidance, but also provide a personal connection with someone who also plays their instrument, which is an incredible motivator to a beginning student. I can't stress how what a, what a, what a wonderful chemistry that is. Additionally, the school-wide constant opportunities by your students is when they come in and play for them, either in duos, trios, quartets, etc., provide exposure to many musical genres. This ignites spark within the child like no other. Uh, we strive, we face even greater challenges in coming years and we strive to offer a meaningful arts magnet program with extremely limited funding. The University Conservatory Partnership Program greatly enhances our ability to deliver quality music instruction to our economically disadvantaged string students. And with that, I believe that that is all she wrote. And uh, let me close my... Manny, thank you very much for sharing uh, your, your findings and all the applicable uh, strategies that you, you know, incorporated into this. I got it in 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, no, of course. That, that's really good. So, you know, you, you, your, your mentor program was from high school to elementary school. I, can you see this applied towards from high school to middle school or high school to elementary school? Absolutely. I focus on the optimal time because I focused on um, South Florida is very unique in that in the 80s, they eliminated all the string programs from all the schools. I mean, that person should have been banned from humanity. Whoever, why they did that, I don't know. Uh, so the, the county has been trying to upgrade. There's a wonderful, there's some wonderful ha handful uh, of uh, Plumosa, and UB Kinsey are very significant, robust programs. 
But that's those are the exceptions. Now, no, excuse me, Victor, the North Conservatory School, the North the, the Conservatory School up in North in North Palm Beach, that's a significant program. They started. It was just elementary. Now it's middle, and uh, it's it's uh, elementary and middle. Now, Victor has a great program there. They're way in the far north end of the county. I could never get a mentor up there. Take them an hour and a half to get there and back. But uh, so that's what, and they have great, uh, great principal there, and they have a great program there. So you have you a conservatory school with Victor. You got Susan at UB Kinsey. You got Laura Pomosa, and uh, and so I mean, if I could have more mentors and I could put more es elsewhere, I would. I am limited to my funding, and I just and I so I just give them to what school can they get to because they have transportation issues. Yeah, so no, I, of course. I the elementary. The next middle school is Bach Middle School of the Art, which is Nancy Beebe. That's up in, in again, the north part of the county. But she has other funding. She brings in guest artists, and she encourages the students to take private lessons. Again, but not everybody gets into there because everybody that comes out of either uh, out of either uh, Plumosa, UB Kinsey, or Conservatory, so about, you, Plumosa's going to have a middle school. So we're headed in that direction. And Victor's already has his middle school. So his kids would go to maybe Dreyfus School of the Arts. So the, you want to facilitate the younger ones so they can so they can move up and get it when when the well, the getting is good. Yeah, so so you you mentioned uh, ad administration and principal. One person asked, Do you have any advice of suggesting this? to administration there this particular person's middle school principal did not allow visitors to come and help out last year what do you suggest for people who are in those situations um that's a very delicate one because you know i mean i've you know you i mean I, let me be blunt the last thing you want to do is piss off your principal so that doesn't do anyone any good and so i think that the principal has maybe a lack of understanding, I think, and the person is, for whatever reason, either fearful that music is going to detract from reading and writing, or um, or the music, or, or maybe she's had problems with visitors before that have caused problems, you know. That's why my mentors are always uh, uh, level two background checks and... Uh, you know, they're already in compliance. When I had the preparatory school where I had 156 minors, that unfortunately will stop functioning in the middle of August. Uh, every all, all the teachers, there are 22 teachers, they all had, even the teaching assistants, they all did level two background checks. So I, we did it every year, myself included. Every year in August, everybody went in, fingerprints, online training, how to work with, how to detect abuse with minors, all of that. So once you have those credentials, you can use those credentials with the principal. So listen, these these mentors are coming in from this institution, and they're great performers, and they all have been background checked, all have level two clearance, and all of that. And I would look, would you consider? And it's not going to cost you anything. Uh, maybe approach it that way, so the the principal does not have to fear security, safety, or the students' reasons. Um, and maybe approach it that way, and then and then approach it. And then slowly, you're going to have to maybe discuss how you know how this is really going to help the student in an all-around way. I don't know if that helps or not. I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's more information than we had before. So you you, you mentioned grants. Where where do you recommend getting started in terms of looking or searching or applying for grants for this particular type of a program? Okay, uh, private grant, the state of Florida grant, the state of Florida, the state of Florida, the cultural, there's a Palm Beach County Cultural Council that gives grants to Palm Beach County residents. And then the Lynn University used to apply for university grants for the state of Florida. So the Division of Cultural Affairs, there was a wonderful woman who used to be there named Ginny Grimsley in Tallahassee. Uh, and Ginny, uh, so Ginny managed the Division of Cultural Affairs in Tallahassee. She managed the state grants. And you had different levels. You know, depending on the budget of the organization, you have level one, level two, level three. So like a level three would be like New World Symphony, the Florida Grand Opera, 
orchestras that had multi-million dollar budgets that needed to apply for grant money for their education efforts, et cetera. So those, those are big budget grants. And then maybe Lynn University was a little bit lower. And then you have some other like a, maybe a choral society or small dance company would apply to level one. So depending upon your, on your overall budget would be whatever category that you were allowed to apply in. The bigger yeah. the budget, the higher the amount you've been asked for. Yeah. But you did this, it's a complicated grant to write. So you need a grant writer to help you with that. So if you're dealing with the university, like let's say, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, bitch, I, maybe Vandercook, Vandercook had a grant writer that helped you guys write grants for Vandercook. Then that person could also write a grant that could help out various different aspects of your program, including maybe a mentoring component. So yeah. usually that's done through that. Now, you can also, many schools, like I know that Laura does and Dreyfus has it, many schools, they start their own foundation to their parents, like a parent association. They start a foundation for, for fundraising. Uh, so if you, have a parents, if you have a parents organization for yeah. your string group or your orchestra yeah. or your band group, I want to get through some other questions before we sure. run out of time here. All right. So uh, another question was in an ideal world, would you see a benefit in having mentors who may be primarily performers attend uh, additional training with the orchestra director or additional pedagogy training? Like if they're primarily studying to be performers, do you see a benefit in them um, having additional training to work? Well, on uh, I would rather have the best possible performer, the best possible performer as a role model to the student, you know, versus someone who has studied the different methods. If I had to choose between the better performer and with lesser, with maybe less knowledge of the educational pedagogy, I'd go with the performer. Because what you want is the best role model. You want somebody who is like coming in, it's like bringing in a you know, uh, if I brought in uh, Rachel Barton Pine, you know, to, to model the best possible violin play. Uh, and, and, what, and what, what, what very often is not realized is that these performers have incredible teachers that have, along their life that have gotten them to be excellent performers. So they have had excellent violin pedagogy to get to the point where they are all over the instrument. So oh, yeah. they have that violin pedagogy. They're not teaching anything else. They have that violin pedagogy in their brain and in their fingers, uh, which is, which is, you know, which is, which is phenomenal. And then the orchestra director says, I want you to work with this young lady or this young man. And I want you to work on first position or shifting to third or their hand position. And with, a little, with, with some psychological adjustment, that mentor can do that. And at some point they had to. They've had their teacher tell them, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Yeah, so another question is real quickly, how, how about families who may have insufficient or unreliable internet? How, how would you go about doing this program in that situation? That is the problem. That, that, is, a, that is a problem. Um, the only thing that I can say that if you have, if you know, let's say you have two students in your program, in a program, or three students, and one of them has excellent internet connection, and these families are able to have, get together, that's the decision for them to make. Um, I don't know what there, there might be if they contact their internet provider and express their and express their concerns and maybe I, I can't afford better, but I need it for educational reasons. I don't know if the internet provider can provide assistance with improving their, their, their bandwidth and the internet connection so that it, because it's done for learning, uh, because if, especially if it comes from, a, from, from, a, from somebody who has economic issues. Uh, so maybe the, the internet company might be able to help uh, if, if approached and just told bluntly, hey, I need this, I need better service because I depended for, for my child to study. Another thing is to maybe to, 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 uh, combine it, to combine with another student 
that's a good connection, then the two of them will do it together. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Thank you very much, Manny, for taking the time to share your your, your project and giving us some um, insights on how to structure our uh, a different type of classroom especially since a lot of us are moving online or at least partly moving online you know the idea of the large ensemble and you know the idea of the large ensemble today is it's is, is not going to work unless you're able to meet in person but structuring particular programs to allow for a mentor program whether it's peer mentors within your program or maybe someone mentioned earlier um, having a mentors with other high schools or partnering up with the local school or shoot we're online you can partner up with a school that's not even from your state uh, that exactly. it's, it would definitely be very very helpful so thank you very much Manny for all that information thank you very much for, you. for yeah, I'll make that information available to everybody through the Necking Cold Generation Hope and, and you have my email manychello at aol.com you're welcome to email me anytime yes very good thank you